this guy, he's got clown hair. He's got, you know, r- rolls around in this real flashy Lamborghini. Like, certainly this isn't the guy, this skinny, lanky guy. This isn't the guy that's going to beat me. I'm not taking him seriously. Well, you need to because he's an absolute savage. And, you know, that's kind of a facade, a facade. But when you look deeper, this is a highly, highly skilled fighter. Hey, bro, I've, I've, I've said it. I've said it for a while now. Like, Sean is good. Sean is very good. Sean understands striking. He understands space. He understands movement. He understands angles. And, uh, bro, his athleticism is, is incredible. His movement, his um, his patience, um, the confidence is just it just it just goes without saying, you know, um, he looked he looked uh, he looked good. He looked good. Just dialed in he had a good he had a good he had a good walkout song as well too you know he, he wanted to be a superstar and i think this does catapult him into that into that stratosphere when that song hit and that that superstar song if you are what you say you are a superstar that place went crazy bro and he walked out with the colorful hair and the tattoos it showed that if this kid can put together a run if he can sustain a run yep. he can be a massive superstar in the sport but it's not only about winning it's about how you win and when you look at him landing yep. that step back right hand and we just saw a picture of connor landing the step back left hand you you look at the parallel and i see and look at omali saying the exact same thing i'm gonna be as big as connor i'm gonna be as big and he goes out and does the f- exact same thing i do to make me as big as connor if you get me so it's just f- madness Sugar Sean O'Malley was on Aljamain. All these, all these have showed love to me and, and respect. And it's what 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 they are what they what they've all been has been a direct correlation of what 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 what's been done over the years. By myself and, and they click, yeah. So I was just so it's great to see, and I support all that, and it's mad to see to be honest. And then what way did the f- finish go? It was almost identical in the main event, and I don't know. It's crazy. It's different. Big respect. Yes, I, I, I might not wrote the whole book, but I wrote a few pages, lads. Yeah, and that's that can't be denied. That cannot be denied. He, oh, oh, the script I wrote, the belief, and the and the way we go about it works. Yeah, T- tried and tested time and time again. I take a lot from Connor. Uh, I learned a ton from Connor. Um, yeah, I, yeah. So I think listening to Connor talk and be like, and seeing his self belief made me confident in. In, in speaking my belief instead of, you know, that wasn't forced when I was on the contender series saying, I have that thing, I have what it takes. I will be UFC champion, I will be a superstar. You hear people say that and that kind of sounds forced. When I said that when I was 20 whatever years old, 21, 22 years old, it was tr- true, I confidence, I meant it. And look where we're at now. Sean O'Malley's one of those kids that I, I, I really love. I, I like seeing him, I like watching him. And not just that, I just, I like the way that he carries himself. And Sean, yes, of course he amounts to fame. And I think the reason he amounts that fame is because it just seems real. It seems real and authentic. Mm-hmm. This is a kid that he, he shows you what he does. He loves to stay at home. He loves to train. He loves to smoke. And so he's doing yeah. it, he's doing it raw. He's doing it authentically and it resonates through. And I, and I said it, the level of confidence that he was just harboring, when you do something in repetition long enough, it becomes the habit. And with that being the habit, you could tell Sean was just confident because this was a habit for him. Just training, relaxing at home, gaming, smoking, that was a habit. And he does that so long that you feel the confidence of no one can touch me. That confidence that he has shown since then, he's at another level now. He understands how good he is. This tall, long, and lanky (laughs) body type is perfect for this sport. Anderson Silva, John Jones, Luke Rockhold, Sean O'Malley, guys that are built like this for their weight classes and tall, long, and lanky. Corey Sanhagen, they're they're problems. Sean O'Malley, man, I think he's he's up there one of the best strikers in, in, um, well, you could even say UFC. He's he's right up there. But um, especially in that division, there's so many. that's a, a stacked division, man. Your Sandhagens, you know, obviously Peter Yarns, Al Jermaine's, Cheetos, all of them, Pedro, you know, all of them. There, there's so many, so much talent, man. It is a stacked division, and I think he's up there with one of the best when it comes to striking. So that's saying something. Uh, he's very creative. He doesn't just throw flashy stuff. It's calculated. 
He's got really good distance management. He's really good at, you know, drawing strikes out of people and countering. He's really good on the offense coming forward. He's good even on the back foot. He's good on his angles. Very, very high level stuff. And he can be very creative while he does that. On a guy that fight like O'Malley, like he's like a one punch guy, very, very, very sniper. You don't run to those guys. You gotta be in front of those guys. You gotta fight those guys. You gotta walk them, walk them down, but you can run crazy. It happened to Aldo. It happened to, to Starling. And if you really watch, like Wonderboy did that to many people. When people rush people like this, like snipers, you can run to them. You have to fight them and you gotta be secure you can fight them. Because Sean is not a guy you can fight just going forward because he won't give you the opportunity to just sit and set his feet. He doesn't do that. And that is one of the things I've been saying about him for a very long time. He has really good footwork and he has a really good one too and uh, a good step back counter. And he does it well from both stances. Congrats to him. He's a world champion now. He can actually solidify, I don't want to say solidify himself, but he can actually... Uh, Credit where credit is due, you know? It's one thing to kind of get catapulted into that which without actually proving yourself, but he proved it. And he did something that a lot of guys couldn't have done to me in a very long time. And I think that's worth something to, uh, to note. And you know what was so impressive? Was after the fight, he didn't jump around like a maniac. Like when I beat Luke Rockall to become the champion, I was as shocked as anyone in the building. I couldn't believe it. Of course, I believed in myself, but you know, you never know until you get your hand raised if you're actually gonna get it done. O'Malley, it was so different. He was stoic, he was cool, he was calm because he knew, right? It was like he knew all along that this was going to happen. And that's how you know that the mental aspect, the fight IQ, the calmness of his mind is on a different level with this man. Never before in UFC history, and I'm quoting MMA history today, has the promotion uploaded an entire pay-per-view main event to their YouTube channel immediately. Seems to be all hands on deck in terms of trying to bloat Sean, Malley into, Sean O'Malley into the next big thing. But we're entering an era now where Sean O'Malley, the fact that the UFC put the finish on YouTube, they put the second round and beyond on YouTube immediately after the fight shows they are trying to pump this guy. They are trying to strap a rocket ship to his back and send him to the moon. I was going to say, like, I was more on the lines of, I feel like he just proved me wrong, man. Like, I, I thought he there was a possibility he could do it, but I was thinking, like, a 10% chance. You see, yeah, this is another guy. <laughs> I, I, I'm making almost a habit of this. This is another guy that I underestimate or, or under underappreciated until recently like un until his last few showings because he's a guy that is, is extremely confident in his ability to to find the knockout to find that chin all you guys were wrong nobody of you guys believed in this dude nobody no, no none of you guys believe in this trans barbie but guess what a right hand a fight game a four ounce glove changes everything i mean to be honest, if I wasn't me and I was looking at me versus Aljo, I probably would have put money on Aljo too. Like he was, he beat Peter Yan twice, once. He beat TJ Dillashaw. He beat Henry Cejudo. Dude's on a nine fight win streak. He was dominating the bantamweight division, the best bantamweight of all time, defended the belt three times. And then I'm coming up, my best win was against Peter Yan in a very, very close fight. I mean, the odds. You know, I would have probably bet against me too if I didn't know me and know the confidence that I possess. It, it was almost picture perfect for Sugar, right? I mean, he came to the Ultimate Fighter one, uh, one, no, excuse me, what's an Ultimate Fighter? I apologize. Uh, Dana White Contender Series, one that hat, Stoop Dog, you know, calling his fights with Uriah Faber. And he says, Welcome to the Sugar Show. Didn't know I was part of the Sugar Show or I was watching it, but I guess we were all part of that Sugar Show. O'Malley should call me out and he he should fight me. I have nine five me trick. He should he should uh, know my name. My name is Merab Tavali Shvili, M E R A B. And O'Malley, you are champion. You are king now, and uh, you should fight. You want you should you should want to fight the best of the best. You know, after Aljo, I'm the best here, and then. You should fight me. Even I'm um, injured, I can fight you with one hand if you wanna like fight next month, you know?